Don't buy Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. At least not yet, anyway. Today, I'm going to run through my opinion on the game after playing during the early release. We'll start with the uh, positives of the game. So starting with number one, the handling. I think it feels great. Each car feels unique and you can feel the weight of it each vehicle so if you've got you know a light vehicle small car it will feel quite uh, quite floaty it will feel really nice into the corners but if you're looking at a heavy vehicle you'll feel the struggle of the vehicle trying to turn the other thing i like about this is that if you drive onto the grass or whatever it will punish you your car will slide off and it will not take too kindly and i think that realism of the handling compared to the need for speed games just feels so like a breath fresh air i think it feels really nice going on to number two i think the graphics look beautiful i will post some images on the screen now you know this game offers so many opportunities for you to just sit there and take beautiful photos starting with number three the vehicle sounds are fantastic again i'll put some clips up of different vehicles revving previous again need for speed games I love the way the engines sound especially when the vehicle pops I think it's a really cool feature and I know some cars do do this in real life and yeah I just think it's a really nice touch as I know that not many racing games actually use proper engine sounds or they just pull it from previous games this is a really nice uh, really nice thing moving on to the new, uh, the next one the clan features so obviously there's two different clans in this game you've got shop and street and you're able to participate in clan races and you can actually you know earn reputation towards that clan uh, to get different ben benefits and bonuses uh, throughout your gameplay and you can also challenge the opposing clan, clan members and uh, do one-on-one -on -one races for money which is a really nice feature it kind of makes the streets feel a little bit more lively as well given that you, you know you're fighting for street rep so another cool feature um this one is a this next one's a little bit of a double-edged sword but the the difficulty of the ai I personally think it feels nice and competitive, unlike the other games, like you know, Need Speed, Forza Horizon, as it's a case of you will be punished if you do mess up. But like I said, it is a double-edged sword, and I'll uh, I'll mention it uh, later on in the video as well. And finally, um, the I do believe that the classic test drive uh, feeling is there, you know, with the progression, the exploration. The grind as well however there are some negatives which I shall mention uh, again later on in the video but yeah I believe you know the classic feeling is there the the grinding aspect the exploration you know the ability to take really nice beautiful photos and, and you know really just take your time exploring the map and you know just you probably find it it's quite fun to explore the entire map, drive around, chill out, you know, with all the different cars, I just think, and I think the pace of the progression is good as well, you know, you're not, um, unlike the Forza games, or sometimes the Need for Speed games, it'll just throw you into a supercar within like five minutes, uh, but you no, know, there is, you know, money to grind, the, the cars are pricey for this reason, and I, you know, I, I like that, because I'm not immediately getting rewarded for playing a 
five, ten minutes of the game. Now, moving on to the negatives, I will start from kind of like what I experienced or more like what, what you guys should be aware of. So, um, first of all, if your setup isn't good enough, it will be extremely hard to run this game. Now, it is very CPU heavy. I've read a lot of people have had their CPU maxed at a hundred percent and tend to have to overclock it. So if, if your setup isn't the best, um, then I, I'd stay away from this game, at least until it's maybe a little bit better optimized. So just keep an eye out, uh, you know, from any patches or whatever to if they, uh, they change this. Second of all, server issues. Now, the biggest backlash with this game is it to be online only. Now, what I'm going to say is if your connection isn't the best, besides the server problems that have been running um, all week, you, you will run into issues. Um, if this applies to you, then again, ideally wait until they announce offline only. And um, I know that as of yesterday, the Crew 2 and Crew Motor Fest just got announced for an offline feature. So hopefully, um, Test Drive C, you know, the, the, the backlash from the fans and uh, add offline only as uh, an option to the game. So, you know, if, you, if your setup isn't the best and your internet connection isn't the best or whatever, again, just wait um, for updates from the game. Uh, to, to announce it as offline only so that you can enjoy the experience and not be constantly booted off the game. Now, moving on to the gameplay side of things, there is a lack of customization. Now, I do know this is standard within test drive games, but it, it kind of just sucks because, you know, um, for, for like your JDM cars or like, you know, your kind of like smaller cars, not your supercars, there, there's lack of there's lack of customization like I said I mean you can't really add spoiler or a body kit on some vehicles where I, I personally believe that should be um, I just think it's a bit disappointing I know that obviously you can change the interior which is nice you change your rooms which is nice and you can add a livery and it's all very nice but the kind of the depth for everything else with the bodywork just just really ruins it for me now, moving on to a point that I made earlier, the AI difficulty. Like I said, it is a double-edged sword. You can in, uh, run into rubber band. Um, in my opinion, they are aggressive. And once you mess up, even once, um, there is a very, very slim chance of you catching up again. It can be extremely frustrating. There has been instances where, you know, I've raced flawlessly and I've still ended up second because the AI just have have more grip to the ground which is you know really unfair and another big drawback is that you can't actually change the difficulty so you know there's there's three different tiers of difficulty and it goes up to expert and you can't change it it goes up as the game goes on and you're unable to change it which i think is is quite bad on their part because obviously if you're not the best racer or anything you'll be really discouraged and that hopefully they implement the ability to change it soon um, and finally there's lots of missing features from like the original test drive games you know this includes the ability to buy houses license races uh, real world shops as well you know like hairdressers clothing shops even tuning and paint shops um, which I know they're inside the workshop now for Solar Crown but it really gives the game that uh, that ghost town kind of feeling it just this was so empty and it, and it lacks that that true test drive feeling that, that that was the whole point of the original game original games being able to drive around go go to the hairdressers all the clothing shops you know drive to the tuning shop and paint shop all across the uh, the map and with that all kind of just being bundled into one building now with maybe two or three or four scattered around the map it it feels extremely empty Overall, 
I do think, you know, I, I enjoy the core aspect of the game. I, I think the features in the game feel great, you know, like I said, the handling feels fantastic. Um, each car has that different personality on the road or even off-road, which makes it feel like that test drive game. And with the, uh, the difficulty of the ARA granting some very close races, I do enjoy the thrill of the competitiveness and not always knowing if I'll actually easily finish first or not. However, with those major aspects missing that make Test Drive unique from all the other racing games such as buying houses and those real world shops, it falls extremely flat for me and I, I personally don't think the gameplay alone makes up for it. However, if you are happy to discard those, those features and just focus on the racing and the exploration, um, then, then I'd say this game uh, is definitely for you. I just expect the uh, servers to be a little bit uh, temperamental. And this, that's it guys. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you want another review, then just let me down, let me know down in the comments. I hope this kind of covers everything that you'd need to know before you buy it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one guys. Thank you. Bye bye.